I think you know I can't get this cyberbullying stuff out of my craw, and that last story was just a, 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 just a grotesque example, and I'm wondering if it has something to do with cyberbullying, so we're going to continue to pursue that story. There's another example tonight about Facebook and photos and how sometimes the two are just a bad mix out there in the, in the Internet. Listen to this. Two little girls, they're 11 and 12. That's like sixth graders. They're accused of altering a friend's Facebook photo to be lewd and violent, and it appeared as if the victim was propositioning other boys, and I mean boys, for sex, because these are not young men, these are little kids. Joining us are 12-year-old Leslie Cody and her mother, Tara, or Tara, I'm sorry, and her stepfather, John Knight. And as well, we have Stephanie Thomas from the Seattle Police Department's Internet Crimes Division. I want to thank all of you. As well, back with us is psychiatrist Dr. Charles Sophie. Those images uh, remain disturbing. Uh, I want to know from Tara what you thought about them. I was completely disgusted, literally sick to my stomach. And what did you do? I just basically had, to, when I initially found out about those pictures, I had to leave the room and I told John, I'm like, we, we have to um, shut this back down because we had to um, see what the, what the damage they did. And he deactivated the, the account and then Right then, we were like, okay, we're going to work a plan. Who did this? And my gut instinct was one of the girls has been a bully with, toward my daughter, Leslie, since fourth grade. And at, immediately that name came to my mind. And, um, and we John, jumped John, on it and my drove. Yeah, John, my understanding is you actually did a little detective work here, right? I did. Um, I had a really good idea of who did it um, once we found out about it. Um, and I did go to their home, and I asked them about it. And at first they denied it, and when I told them that they would kind of fit a little bit, I told them we traced the IP address right to there, and then that um, the police were already on the way, then they just both started begging us to forgive them and not to have the police come, and they were telling me they didn't mean to do it. But obviously they meant to do it. They actually had control of that Facebook page for a good seven hours. Well, the, real, the question to me is what did those young girls' parents do? How did they respond to this? Well, no, they didn't even know until we contacted them to come to their house and said, you need to come now. The police are on their way. Steph, I'm going to go to you. And Leslie, I thank you also. I'm going to be with you in just a second. But Steph, this is not uncommon, is it? The parents have no idea what kids are doing on the Internet? Right. This is a huge issue in this area and all around the country. The disconnect between what parents think their kids are doing online and then in turn what their children are actually participating in. And it goes back to both educating both students and parents alike. What should those parents do? Well, first of all, it goes back to parents providing their children with this technology and not effectively monitoring it. That is a big issue that the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force tries to address by educating parents, but it goes back to being involved, giving your child this technology and then just letting them go to their room, you know, not monitoring what they're doing. Most parents don't want to look at the possibility that their child could be a bully, so they're not looking for those signs. Well, let's take this example as a case study, and uh, let's say you discover that your kids are doing something you don't like on the Internet. This is an extreme example of that. What should parents do? Do you have some specific suggestions? Well, specifically, I think you need to stress the issue is, you know, the same way you treat people in real life is the same way you treat people on the Internet. Kids and teenagers tend to hold two completely different standards for what they're willing to say to somebody's face and behaviors they're willing to do in front of a live audience and a completely different set of standards for what they're willing to do behind a keyboard and behind a cell phone. And stressing that with kids, especially at a young age, is very important because it goes back to that online reputation and dig digital citizenship that's so important nowadays with the technology. I want to go back to Leslie now, uh, and I find that oftentimes the greatest wisdom comes from the young people who are in there fighting these fights. Leslie, what did you think when this was happening to you? Is this uncommon? Was this a big surprise? Are you just one of many kids that have to suffer this way? Um, it was a very big surprise, and it was actually scary and really inappropriate. Uh, I didn't really like it, and kids have don't other like to talk about this kind of have other situation. friends come to you and supported you, or did other kids, uh, how were your sort of peers, the other kids your age, reacting to this incident? Um, well, first when I got to school, they were all staring at me and 
thought I was weird. And then after a while, people forgot about it, and then it just got better. So you're doing okay now? Yeah. Okay. Dr. Sophie, we're back in the studio with you here. So I want to ask you the same question I asked Steph, which is, let's say you become aware that a kid is doing something you don't like on the Internet. Are there specific kinds of steps we can give people out there to intervene? First of all, we, we're all saying the same thing, which is monitor what they're doing, participate in their lives. But let's say you find something you don't like. Well, I mean, first of all, educate yourself to this device you're giving your child. So if you don't know how to work it, you're not going to know what to check on. Monitor rules times of days, know where they go. And then if you discover something like that, that is a red flag. Do not ignore it. Jump in, ask your child, find out who they've reached. Because what people don't understand is these are crimes. And even if they're not forcible by legal ramifications that they're crimes, you're still able to footprint a lot of that stuff to see where they're coming from. And I don't think children oftentimes understand that. So that's part of the education. But if you see something, jump on it. John, I'm going to go back out to you again and ask what happened after these girls were begging for forgiveness? Where'd the story go from there? Uh, we did have, we had the police coming. Um, and unfortunately, sadly enough, the police, when they first arrived, the officer didn't want to do a report. He would tell, he kept insisting that they're just kids. Um, and we know that then the problem is there's a history, with one of the girls especially, there is a history. And enough is enough at a certain point with the bullying and the terrorizing. And it's at some point the bullying is going to stop and a precedent needs to be set. Now, um, in regards to the last comments, too, is um, we do monitor what Leslie does, but these kids are pretty savvy, too. And when they took over her Facebook page, first thing they did was they blocked her mother, me, and all the other family members. So we had no idea what was going on. And Tara and Leslie were out together while this was happening. Leslie, how did they get the pictures? They must have looked them up on Google and then just... No, no, the, the pictures. What did, how did they get your pictures? Those pictures Maybe were Maybe, Tara, you, can, you, can, you um, can help her out with that a little bit. Yeah, well, um, they were on my um, uh, pictures and they took them and then um, they went on this like little software thing called Picnic. And they like morphed my pictures and then put mm -hmm. stuff on them, like inappropriate. Okay, what are you gonna say? Um, they said I'm a slut. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Steph, my understanding is you, you educated me today when I spoke to you. I think it was you I was talking to earlier about some website they go to and they blast anonymous statements. Tell me about that. Yes, Formspring. It's a website in which teenagers and young kids are using to ask each other anonymous questions, which the website has it advertised as sort of what's your favorite song, what's your favorite vacation spot, but you hide behind this ability to be anonymous. And so teenagers, middle school, high school, they're, they're not using the website for those purposes. It's all very sexually ex explicit, it's humiliating, and you can link it to Facebook and Twitter that sort of leads to more mass humiliation. I mean, here's one thing about the Internet. Uh, you know, things that can be a liability can also be an asset, you know. Uh, and I've always thought that if I was on top of the Internet, it could be an asset. In other words, if I had all the passcodes to my kids' stuff and if I could go downstream and even see what other kids are saying and doing and really was diligent about the monitoring, this would be a, a useful tool. Tara, did you think so at one time? Well, what initially when Leslie wanted a um, Facebook, Facebook account, um, we said well, we are going to know the password and it's going to be fixed where the settings and all the announcing announcements is going to go to my phone not hers so anything that she streamed anything she's anything she put on her wall it went to my phone but i wasn't concerned with that because she was only allowed to be friends with people that were family members church members coaches and friends from school so we fixed it she could not even accept new friendships from anybody um so they you know the the damage that these girls do they, I should say they did, it's still under damage control that I'm still trying to figure it's, out it's, how to it's clean it really, all up. Yeah. I, I understand it's a cautionary tale, so even being diligent. Here's what someone posted on Tara's Facebook page, and this is, again, these girls being very savvy. Can I have condoms for my birthday this year? I mean, it, it gets, I, it, to yeah, see this yeah. stuff, yeah, I mean, to see this stuff. And then they stuff, deleted me, and then they deleted me after that, so then I couldn't erase it right away. You couldn't see it because we were blocked. Because we were deleted. <laughs> Again, so, so this is about aggression, guys. 
This is about our kids and aggression and their inability to contain their aggression. And the Internet has merely become a tool for acting out aggression. And frankly, it's disgusting. 